This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. Very good. That's me. Okay, amazing. So, um, I wanted to tell you something. It's very deep, very deep. Um, get ready, prepare yourself. It's a very deep knowledge. It's a very, very deep understanding. We spoke about um, those issues, those concepts many times, and we're gonna continue um, explaining them. But there is something, a certain combination of that information that is revealing a new light and a very deep, deep one. We said and it's a known thing that the main name that Hashem, the Creator, revealed to us of His names, and He has, I don't know how many names, what's the number of those names, probably endless names, numbers of names, but the Creator gave us one of His names to be known as the name that is the name of Hashem and we're writing that name in Yud Kei Vav Kei and we're not allowed to say that name and when we want to describe that name when we want to talk about the name so or that we're gonna say Hashem the name or that we're gonna say Havaya Havaya is in a certain way the name itself but still being pronounced differently and using the same letters of Yud Kei Vav Kei in a different order, and we're calling Hashem Havaya, Havaya Baruch Hu. So the name Havaya means that the Creator Himself, He is the blessed present. He is the existence itself. That's who He is. He is the now, in the present, with us. That's him. Another thing that we spoke about is that Hashem Elokechem Emet, that your God is the God of truth. He is the truth itself. The truth is being revealed, that is being revealed in the world, is Hashem. Like I said many times, when you want to connect yourself to Hashem, when people are coming to me and telling me, I want to know Hashem, I want to serve Hashem, so like, it sounds kind of okay who is Hashem for you what what are you talking about like for him Hashem is one thing for him Hashem like what do you mean when you say I want to serve Hashem I want to commit my life to Hashem I want to feel Hashem what, what do you what, what do you mean and if people will ask me how can I connect myself to Hashem so again like what can I tell them like Many rabbis, many people, also the Torah in many places is telling people serve Hashem means follow and keep the obligations, the mitzvot, Torah or mitzvot. You should put filin, you should learn Torah, you should keep Shabbat, you should eat kasher. Wonderful, amazing. All Torah or mitzvot are included inside of that serving Hashem, following the will of Hashem. But we know that a person can also put filin and still to stay a liar. And then the fact that he put filin didn't help him to come closer to Hashem. And the opposite even might reject him from Hashem if he will go in a foreign way while putting filin. If he will take the Torah mitzvot, the holy obligations, and instead of connecting them with truth, with love, with positive vibes, with positive intention to Hashem, just will go bent in a bent way, in an awkward way, in a, in a weird way, while claiming to keep Torah and mitzvot, even if physically he will do something that will look like he is keeping Torah and mitzvot, that way of being observant won't bring him to the purpose, won't connect him to Hashem. So the truth is needed while keeping Torah and Mitzvot. The truth is that middle thing that is connecting the person to Hashem 
And you cannot be connected to Hashem without being connected to the truth. Because when you are doing things in a lie, so a person that is lying, a liar, cannot stand in front of Hashem. A person that is lying cannot stand in front of his eyes. That's it. You have been rejected by lying. And that's it. Now you can have the most fanciest, most expensive tefillin. You can eat the most mm, kosher things. Mehadrin, shalom mehadrin. It won't do no good for you as long as your heart is impure. When your intentions are foreign and you're going in a different path, not in the path of Hashem. What's the path of Hashem? Pikud Hashem Yesharim. To be straight, to be honest, to be righteous, to be right, to be an honest person that is not lying. So the truth and the existence and Havaya. Those are two things that I want to explain to you now how they're coming together. Now, when you're walking in the street and someone is asking you for charity and you have, let's say, a $20 bill in your pocket and you don't want to give it, you need it, you want to buy something with it or at least it gives you quiet and comfort to have it in your pocket that, if you, might, that you might need it. You want to keep that $20 bill in your pocket. Now someone is coming to you in the street and asking for charity. Hey dude, can you help me with some money? Now, in the present, in the moment that he asked you that question, now, in the present, now you know the truth. What you will choose to answer, how to reply to that question, depends on your free choice. That's the free choice. Now you can choose if to connect yourself to the truth or to lie. The truth doesn't mean that you have to give him the $20 because he asked. No. You can tell him with an honest heart, with a pure intention, I'm sorry, I don't have enough. To say I don't have or to say uh, like, I don't know what, something that will be a lie. So that's a lie. But to be honest doesn't mean necessarily to give. But to express your honesty, to say, I'm sorry, I cannot give you right now, or I wish that I could give you, whatever. Be honest, will attach you to Hashem. Because Hashem and the truth are two things that are one, that are happening in the present. Now, if a friend asks you, do me a favor, can you take care of something for me? And you told him, yes, I will. Someone asked you, for, for a favor and you told him okay no problem I'll, I'll, I'll do that for you after a couple of days he's coming back to you and asking okay did you do it for me and in the present in the moment that he asked you you know the truth now again like we said you have two ways you can tell him yes I did it, it will be a lie. You can tell him, oh, I forgot about you, it will be a lie. If you'll be honest, you can say, oh, you know, I forgot about it, but express your honesty. What will happen? You will connect yourself to Hashem. In every situation that you will connect yourself to Hashem, to the truth in the present, you will live your life with Hashem. And then the blessing of Hashem will be on you. Because you attached yourself to Hashem. Because Hashem is the truth and He is the existence. He is the Avaya. Hashem is not in the past and Hashem is not in the future. Because there is no past and there is no future. Because also in the past that you experience certain experiences, you experience them in the present, while you were in the past, but you were there in the present. There was no past. You are an eternal creation that lives its life with the Creator. But you are under the imagination of time. But in the true nature of your creation, you are connected to infinity in the now, in the present. While you are who you are, you are connected to Hashem when you are connected to the truth. 
But when you start plastering and covering your life, making excuses, ru running away, denying, fighting, arguing, being angry, sad, falling to your self-pity, your self-sadnesses, all of your bad midot, your lust, your desires, and you are dividing yourself from the truth, then you are cutting yourself from Hashem. Now what does it mean? In every bad midah, in every bad man or bad behavior, bad attribute, when you're choosing them, you're choosing those ones instead of the truth. For an example, when a person is following his desire for food, but he's going after it without paying attention to his inner voice that is screaming, stop, it's not good for you, it's not good for me. Your inner voice, your soul is screaming. Don't you remember that stomach pains that you had yesterday? Don't you remember the hours of suffering? Don't you remember the dentist? Don't you remember the pains? Don't you remember the, the tiredness? Don't you remember the, the, all the foreign thoughts and, and, and how, how confused you become by eating that kind of food or eating too much? You're eating and then you feel that you're eating too much, but you choose to ignore that feeling, to ignore the truth that is screaming from within, stop! And you choose to eat and to cover the truth with lies. No, I need to eat it. And if I won't complete it, I won't be happy. And my life is bitter enough and I need to make myself happy and I cannot stop myself. All kinds of excuses. Every, I'm, I'm just like mm, telling you mine. But you can tell me yours if you want after the class. I have three and a half minutes. You can all come and tell me all your noise and I'll be very happy to hear it. In reality, you know in the present exactly when it's the time to finish the meal. Now, if you don't follow that truth in the present, in the moment that your soul is screaming enough, if you ignore it, so then you go into the twilight zone, to a world of options and confusions and opinions and maybe and should I or shouldn't I and you have ways and paths and, 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 and many, many, many ways to lose your mind. Maybe I should eat only this, maybe I should stop for a few minutes. You have many options, but all of them are lies. This is already the world of confusion. It's Alma de Shikha, the world of lies. But the Creator Himself is using your heart, Lecha Amar Libi, to you. Your heart is saying, Bakshu Panay Tamid, ask for my face always. Your heart is always calling you in the present to look for Hashem. And Hashem is talking to us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. In every moment there is truth of that moment. And you should connect yourself to that truth every moment, again and again and again and again, while eating, while drinking, while thinking, while talking, while hearing, while walking, while opening, while closing. In every situation, just listen to your true self. What do you mean true self? To the truth that is coming from your own self, from within. Listen to what that you know and sense that is the truth. You don't need a rabbi for that. You don't need to be connected to the holiest ones. You don't need to finish Shas for that. Divrei emet nikarim. Words of truth can be recognized. It's part of the creation. Hashem did it. Everyone can feel it. You don't need to be a genius, not an angel, not a righteous man, and not a, a flaming fire, a pillar of fire that is illuminating the darkness. No. You should just want the truth with all your heart. You should connect yourself to the truth that you feel and you sense that is rising from within. And if you will do that, you will live eternal life. You will live eternal life in the present. You won't die. Every moment of your life will be a life of development, of growth. Every moment you will connect yourself in a higher level to Hashem. 
Even if you're working as a mechanic in the garage, even if you're selling tomatoes in the grocery stores, even if you're carving the roads, even if you're cleaning in the darkness, even if you need to go through most horrible humiliations to see your, your, your downs and how, which low, filthy places you fell into, even while doing that, if you will connect yourself to Hashem, to the truth, to the fact that the Creator put you in that position. And now from that position, you should just reach out to Him and to look for His truth. What is the real truth of my situation? And again, it's not to walk in the clouds. It's not to be a genius. You don't need to be a prophet to understand this class. Inside of that test, in that hard hour, in those moments of being, of, that you're being challenged, if you will ask yourself, like an example that I gave once, I found myself, my kids made a huge mess in the house, their toys were all over the place, and I'm going and fix it and clean it and come and do it and now and, 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 and you have to and whatever, and nothing worked. And then it was too late, they had to go to sleep already and they didn't listen to me at all. And I was standing in the living room looking at all of that mess. And I said to myself, listen, relax. You want the house to be clean, so clean it. Like, if really you want the house to be clean, so clean it. Like, if you don't want the house to be clean and you want to go and scream at your kids, so go scream at them. But you have a free choice here. Choose! What do you want? Now, what is the result that you're asking for? You want the house to be clean? Clean it. Reality. Like, there is no other way. No one else will clean it. Today, no one will clean it. So you should? I should. Okay. So if I should, and that's my will, and that's my understanding, to connect myself to the truth means to bend and to start picking up all those toys and putting them in the right boxes and cleaning and then swapping the, sweeping the floor and taking care of the mess and cleaning it. If that's the point of truth, if this is what you want to achieve, if that's the truth. Now in a fight, in a war, your wife she's saying, your friends are saying, this situation, it's a mess. Okay, now ask yourself, do you want a divorce? Do you want to break the house? Do you want always to be right? Do you want to fight? Do you want to win? Do you want to kill? Go do whatever you want. But if you want peace, if you, if you will think about it, you will come to the right conclusion. You'll ask yourself, the result of me now going loud, screaming, fighting, arguing, rebuking, standing stubborn on my point and bringing proofs to it and examples to it, will it bring me to the place that I desire. In the end of that ro ro road, will I be happy? The answer is no. So why do I to go all that distance? So wait, wait, wait a second. I have a question. I know. It's Eliyahu okay. Anavi, yeah? Eliyahu Anavi. So why did Eliyahu Anavi come to Why did he come to Abibris? Eliyahu Anavi, why is he? Because he said, he said, Ozri is so He said, the said they did something wrong. So Hashem said, you're right, but you said, I apply your soul, so you have to come to every bris to show they do keep the bris. So what, what, so what? Is, so so if, if, if it's, if it's Gedai not to say the MS, so why do you all know we say, oh, it's a You're saying that if, if the Shlemus is to, to let things pass and, and, and I should, I should, I should come to every bris, I shouldn't say, oh, it's a right. So he would have never became a Malach. He only became a Malach. Why? Because he said, oh, because he said, he said the MS. Okay, after the fact, you see, let's explain the question. You, you ask like that. I hope I understand. Eliyahu Anavi, he, so to speak, he been punished, he been punished him. by Hashem, yeah. because that he said to Hashem, your children, they left the covenant, the agreement you had with them. Hashem told him, listen, you said that they left me, so now, from now on, you will receive that power to become like an angel, that you can fly in the world and won't die, and you'll have the ability, and with that power, you will go to all the Britot, every time that a Jewish child being born and going to have a Brit Milah, the covenant, you will stand there and testify that they are keeping my words and that they are, right? So you're asking. Asking, what's your question? Yeah, you shouldn't have said it because, because he's, he's, he's standing on his point. 
the point he was standing on his point first of all so first of all first of all he was standing on his point to show that Am Israel were wrong so Hashem rebuked him on that so first of all we know that ideally it's not the will of Hashem that we will rebuke no what the, he was trying to, he was trying to say that Pius was something wrong he been punished you but, agree but he, was, but he was he was right he, you say that he was right Hashem said, since you're Hashem too strict, told him, since you're too strict, you have to give Elisha. So but how he can right, he, be, he was right? He 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 was he was the. When midata I met, listen, okay. He was you, the. Yes, okay, I understand. But it was still so, lashon hara. It no was. One asked him. When uh, someone asks you, you have to tell the truth. I understand that last week we didn't give a class, so you have a lot of questions. I understand <laughs> it, but listen. <laughs> It's true that Eliyahu Navi was a prophet of truth. We're not doubting that at all. And that all the words that came out of his mouth were words of truth. There is no doubt. And also he is being called Isha Emet. He is the man of truth. The there is no doubt about it. Now, the thing is with Eliyahu Navi that he was more strict than he was supposed to. More radical. And we know that he had that inside of him. Eliyahu is Pinchas. He's yeah. coming from that place of having that fire, flaming passion inside of him. So he had that so-called Yetzirah of being too strict, too makpid, too, too radical on his holiness, too much in the eyes of Hashem in a way, not that Hashem said that it was not true, but Hashem rebuked him and taught him, you know what, if you said it, so now you will be the one to fix it, and you will come and tell me the praises of Am Yisrael, how they're keeping. So. When Midata I met, when the Midah of Truth came to the Creator and told him, don't create humans, don't create people, so Hashem punished her. And what he did, He took Midat I met, the Midah of Truth, and he threw it, He threw it from the sky, from heaven, down to the ground. But by doing it, he actually sent the truth to be the messenger of him, of the Creator himself, to grow down, out, back up from the ground, from the land. Emet me'eretz titzmach. So we see the same pattern here, that Hashem, even though that His Midah is Midah of truth, that He is the God of truth, when the truth is coming and rebuking and saying bad things on his beloved ones, so Hashem is not accepting that truth. Also the truth of Eliyahu Navi, Elijah the prophet, when he came with that radical truth, the Creator could not receive that truth, because Hashem, He holds in a higher level than the level of that truth. He holds in the real truth, the Emet La'amita, that it's to reveal the mercy, it's to reveal kindness. So. When we're facing situations like those, that the truth is annoying us, that we feel like we must rebuke and we must tell the truth, we must remember that even though that we recognize something real, a real lacking, a real problem that is going on here, it doesn't mean that it's the will of Hashem that we will reveal that truth right now. Maybe more time is required to cook it, to prepare for it, to build a vessel for that truth to be accepted because a person is obligated to say words that can be heard, but words that cannot be heard are not allowed to say. So when we have something to say, we must think first if we should say it or not saying it, even if it's the truth. Not every truth is a truth that will heal and will satisfy the Creator as well, will help. So we need to check ourselves what is the real truth that is needed in this situation. And the person that will follow that advice to connect himself to the truth in every moment and by that to connect himself to Hashem in every moment will figure out the real will of Hashem. Because like we said right now, the Creator gave us the Torah. And he obligated us to keep Torah and mitzvot. And he commanded us to keep the Shulchan Aruch and to follow the rules of, 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 of wonderful Judaism. But we can see that we are facing challenges in our days, in our generation, that people are not able 
to receive, to enjoy from those fruits, from the sweetness of those fruits, from the diamonds that are treasured in the Torah. So what we should do? Chanoch lanar al pidarko. You should educate the person, the kid, that person that is willing to learn corresponding to his ability, to his way. You need to be more sensitive to him to understand where is he holding. Because if you're going to put too much on him, he can die. It can kill him. He can lose his mind because of the weight of that holy yoke of heaven. Because of the holiness. The holiness can be a burden that is too much for him to digest, to understand. To go to a Holocaust survivor and to argue with him and to rebuke him, to tell him that it's all for the good. It's not something that you should do. To go to someone that feels sorrow, that feels pain, that been molested, that been destroyed, and to force him to understand that what that happened for him to him was all for the best, was all from the good. Sometimes a person needs a hug. Sometimes a person needs a friend. Sometimes a person just needs a shoulder, and it will give him much more power to understand those things by himself. But if you will try to present those things to him, the light can kill him. The light can damage his eyes. He will be blinded from the light. To be blinded from darkness and blinded from the light is the same thing. You don't see anything. You can't function. You can't walk. It doesn't matter if it's from light or from darkness. A blind person that cannot see won't choose to be blinded in a, in a certain way. Like He wants to see. He wants the light to come in measures. He wants the light to fit into the vessels of his ability to see. He wants to have the ability to enjoy the sweetness of what it Hashem is offering. So when we want to come closer to Hashem, we must connect ourselves to the real truth of Hashem. To what that Hashem wants from us right now. To be honest with ourselves. Because sometimes for you the best thing will be really to push yourself out of bed and to rush yourself to do amazing things. But sometimes you need to know where to stop when it's too much for you. You need to learn how to breathe. There are moments that if you want to do something for Hashem, you need to violate even rules of Torah like the last Mishnah in Masechet Barchot is saying. Et la'asot la'ashem heferu Torah who going to tell you what you can violate, what you cannot violate? Who can guide you? Can I tell you, don't put filin, don't keep Shabbat, don't go to the mikveh, don't eat kosher. I can, no one can guide you on that. Who can guide you on that? Only when you know inside of yourself that your intentions are pure, then you should believe in yourself that you can know that this is too much for you. And you need to let go. And then, if your intention was really good, and you just couldn't find the power to do it, then, after a while, you will come back to it. The commandment is, "Kechol asher ase. As much as you find power in your hand to do, that's how much you should do. You should find out about yourself how much power you have in your hand. And if it's too much for you, you can feel it. It's breaking me. It's bringing me to sadnesses. It's bringing me to anger. It's bringing me to frustration, to sadness, to depression. I'm fighting with people over that thing. I'm arguing with my beloved ones. I'm losing my family. You can feel, you can sense those things. And you must be a person of truth. To recognize the real truth inside of yourself. What is the reason that you are now thinking about releasing a little bit? Loosing your grip a little bit. What is the real reason? You can only be honest with yourself and ask yourself those questions. And when you will ask yourself those questions with an honest heart, with a pure intention of a good will, willing to do as much as you can, wanting to keep everything as much as you're able to, and more than that, and asking for it. But in a certain situation, you find yourself that you are cracking, that you're breaking, that you're not as stable as you were. Now it's the time, the time to relax. And only you 
can be aware to your inner voices that are telling you too much or telling you push on, keep on. Only you can be aware to your inner voice. No one else can guide you on that. Once in a while we're meeting righteous people that they enjoy the divine spirit of Hashem. They have Ruach HaKodesh and you go to their place and they will tell you something about yourself that they can give you an advice that will heal you, will solve you problems of hundreds of years. No problem. Those things can happen. Even in a regular person on the street, once in a while Hashem can use people to open your eyes. The fantastic book will will push you for, forward thousands of miles that you wouldn't achieve in a lifetime. It, it, can, it can be that you will enjoy wisdom from other people once in a while. But in our daily effort of finding the truth, we should work on our self-awareness to connect ourselves to the inner voice of truth that is talking to us from within. The Creator, He is talking to us using the outside world, the external world, as a language of signs to hint us on our inner world, on our inner connection to Hashem. Hashem is an inner thing for the person. Hashem is dressed in your soul. Hashem is the source of life. He is the life of life. Chayachayim. He is the source of life. He is the energy that is waking you up in the morning, that is running the systems of your body from within. It's a source of energy. It's an endless spring of good that is coming out to the world. And you need to be aware to that inner voice, to that inner vibe, to that inner passion that is waking up from within. Another very important thing. Parents that wants to help their children. When you want to help your child, you must understand that your child is exactly like you. He has his outside shell, his body, and he's got his inner world. Now, when we want to educate our children to go in the right way, what are we doing? We're looking for the best school, we're looking for the best environment, neighborhood, good friends, good people around them, the best teacher that they will guard their eyes, won't see impure things, that they will learn only holy things. Great. All those things that we just mentioned are only external things. Though this is the surrounding that we want to support them. But if you want to build them from within, how are you going to do that? Every compliment and good things that you will tell him, Oh, you're amazing. You're such a clever child. You're, you're beautiful. You're gorgeous. You're righteous. You're amazing. Whatever you got, you can do it. I believe in you. All those things are external things that are coming from outside. You want to nurture him from inside. You want him to grow, right? You want him to find his inner power. How are you going to do that? How are you going to touch his inside when you're trying all the time to come from outside? Even in the most holiest things that you can do for him, singing psalms of Tehillim for him, telling him only good things, that he will never going to hear the parents fight, whatever, it's all his outside. You're touching him from outside. You're reaching out to him from outside. How are you going to reach his inner flame? I'll tell you. He received his life from you. He received his life from his parents, right? When they brought him to life, they gave him a spirit. Inside of the sperm and inside of the egg, there is a spirit. There is a soul. And this is why it's not allowed to make an abortion, because there is life to that creature, to that child, even when he is so tiny. Because you gave him a part of life that came out of your life. It's the essence of your life and it's the essence of the life of your life partner. And both of those spiritual sparks are a spiritual vessel to hold his soul. 
Now when you want to access his soul, that his soul will rise, will illuminate, will shine, you cannot do it through his soul. Because after you dress that soul into shape, into body, you don't have an inner access to it anymore. For you, it's blocked and sealed inside of his body. And you're not allowed to violate that body to break into that body. So his soul is closed and trapped for you as a parent from outside. You cannot reach it. How will you reach the source of his soul? From the same place that you gave him that soul from within. You need to work on yourself. You need to fix yourself. When you will work on yourself to be a happy person, your child will be happier. When you will work on your faith, your child's faith will grow. When you will have happiness and joy and satisfaction from life, those will be the things that your child will experience in life. Because you are a tree with branches and those branches are bringing fruits out to the world. And the fruits are not being nurtured from outside, they're being nurtured from within. Now if you want to feed the fruit, you need to feed the branches. How are you going to feed the branches? You need to feed the trunk. How are you going to feed the trunk? You need to feed the roots. How are you going to feed the roots? You're going to connect yourself because you are the trunk. You are those branches. You are those roots. You should connect yourself to your roots. You should connect yourself to who you really are. And by that you will impact your child with positivity, with truth, with confidence, with happiness, with all good qualities that you will work on yourself. This is why parents that are running after their children to make sure that they will have this and that and always to take care and run after them and making sure and, and, and calling and phone calls and all of the time arrangements and, and errands to make sure that they'll have and have and have. They're not achieving their goal in the end. They can run after their children for 30, 40, 50 years and won't achieve what did they ask for in the first place? That their children will be happy. Why? Because those parents themselves are miserable. Running and chasing after their kids. Losing their minds. Instead of working on themselves. To have confidence. To have faith. To be happy. To be relaxed. To talk to Hashem about your issues. To connect yourself to your true self. And when you will do that you will see your children are blooming. You will see them growing and succeeding and developing from within. You will experience those things in reality. You will see. Instead of running and doing like crazy, I'm not saying don't take care of them. Do as much as you can with the power you have. But again, connect yourself to reality. Isn't it too much what that you're doing? Try to do something else. Try to build yourself now. And then you will see that that self-building will give an inner power, a deep understanding. Source of new energy will rise from within your children. And they will get stronger and more powerful and more successful. Thank you, Moti, for hosting us. No, you did something. You did. You did. And we appreciate you for that. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you Facebook, YouTube and all the other outlets, souls around the globe. Thank you and you're welcome. Thank you. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your request should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.